The Moving Platform is one of my favorite sources of movement jank in Titanfall 2. While the movement system itself is known for being extremely well polished and smooth, moving platforms, as simple as they seem on the surface, can break that movement very quickly, and in some pretty weird and interesting ways. There's a surprising amount of stuff going on with these things, which is why they're also just kind of fun to talk about. Let's start by taking a look at Dome Launch. In the second chapter of Into the Abyss, you're supposed to climb up along this wall all the way to the top where the dome assembly sequence is triggered to progress the game. This climb can be skipped by using the crane arm that holds the platform that you initially arrive on. After separating from the platform, it goes through this animation, where it momentarily has just the right angle and velocity to launch off of it. So by standing in the right spot and timing a jump at the right time, you can carry that speed into a jump that sends you pretty high. And this on its own would be totally reasonable if it wasn't for that double jump. You may have already noticed that it sends you way higher than it seems like it should. So what's going on here? Well, when moving platforms are first implemented into games, there are a few things that need to be done so that they behave in a realistic way. One of those things is making sure that the jump height stays consistent no matter which way the platform is moving. Usually this is done by combining the velocity of the platform with a jump velocity in some way. This is to prevent situations where you jump too high on a downward moving platform and too low on an upward moving platform. So how did the Titanfall devs approach this problem? Well, what it seems like they didn't do was just carry over whatever system was in the version of the Source engine that they had. Comparing it against Portal 2, which is the closest Source engine sibling to Titanfall, there are some differences in how moving platforms and their velocities are handled. The way it seems to work in the Titanfall engine is that whenever the player touches a platform, all of the calculations and measurements of your velocity become relative to that platform. Here's what that means. Right here, I'm on solid ground, and the velocity reads 0 when I'm standing still, 162 when walking, and 243 when sprinting. Very exciting stuff, I know, but here's the thing. These values are exactly the same on a platform that's moving, because everything is now measured relative to that platform, and your absolute speed is simply ignored. What this means for the jump height is that the jump impulse is likely just being added on top of that relative velocity. This makes both the velocity measured and the jump height consistent with the platform. And here's actually where it gets janky. Since the velocity stays relative to the platform even after jumping, that means that the link that's created when you touch the platform does not get severed after you lose contact with it. In fact, it only gets updated the moment you touch a different platform. This is also what was done differently in Portal 2. There, the connection is severed right when you lose contact with the platform, and your velocity is instantly converted back to be absolute. Since Titanfall 2 doesn't do this, the combined jump height and platform velocity get applied again for the double jump. This actually works and feels fine in very simple situations, like when you stay close to the platform and it just keeps moving under you. Where it starts to look weird is when the platform stops moving after you jump off, or you just leave the platform outright. Because there's nothing to account for these kinds of situations, where your frame of reference becomes the rest of the level, you get to see what that extra jump height actually looks like. This, by the way, also applies in the same way to platforms that are moving down. Your absolute jump height simply gets reduced by the downward velocity of the platform. And this can lead to some very strange scenarios where your double jump effectively does nothing. To tie this back to dome launch though, the crane arm that gives us the initial boost only moves vertically for a very short period of time. But by jumping off, we're still keeping that platform velocity and just applying it again for the double jump. Now, the wackiness of platform velocity is not limited to just the vertical axis. There's also some interesting behavior in the horizontal plane. And even if you've played the game for a while, there's a good chance you don't know about it, because frankly, it's not the easiest thing to notice. This behavior ties in directly with a very specific property of how air strafing works. If this is the first time you're hearing about it, air strafing is a movement technique in Source games that allows you to both gain speed and move in a curve to make turns while you're in the air. The rate at which you can make those turns changes with how much speed you have. At lower speeds, you can turn much more sharply than when going at very high speeds. To really see what that difference looks like, we can use our task tools to show us the optimal turning rate at these different speeds. So now the question becomes, what does this optimal strafing look like when we add platform velocity? As weird as that looks, that is technically the optimal turn rate. And if we think about it, it does track with how the connection between you and the platform stays even after you jump off. Again, since everything about your velocity is calculated relative to the platform, 
Even if you get a big horizontal boost from that platform, that doesn't really matter if you just jump off out of a sprint. Relative to the platform, you still just have sprint speed, and as a result, your strafing will look the same as if you just sprint jumped from solid ground. Only once you've actually touched the ground does the velocity get updated and ear strafing works like normal again. Like the modified double jump height, this actually works fine in very simple situations, and even lets you strafe in a way that feels normal on a moving platform. As long as it's moving at a constant rate, not changing directions, or god forbid you decide to leave the platform. But to be fair, this is something that would not work on Portal 2's moving platforms, because the fact that you have to deal with your absolute speed when jumping off means that you have to strafe in this weird diagonal pattern just to keep up with the platform. Alright, now take a look at this. This is called Snuggle Slide, and unlike the previous bit of jank, this actually has a practical application in the speedrun. It was named after the runner Snugglepug, who was the first to accidentally discover that if you slide over this bridge as it extends over the gap, you get a pretty massive speed boost. Holy shit! The size of the speed boost is about the same as the speed that the bridge itself is moving. But the weird part is obviously that we get the speed boost even though the bridge is moving in the exact opposite direction. So here's why that happens. When going from solid ground to a moving platform, that platform has to accelerate you to the same speed that it itself is moving. That acceleration doesn't happen instantly. Since ground friction isn't infinite, you actually slide across the platform very briefly as it's trying to accelerate you. That's what's happening in absolute terms. The direction of that small slide is, relative to the platform, directly backwards. So the way to visualize this in relative terms is that it also acts like a backwards impulse on your velocity right after being converted to be relative to the platform, with ground friction being the thing that slows you down to match the platform's velocity. That slide on its own, however, is not enough to get a boost like the one we see in Snuggle Slide, because that impulse we get at the beginning is only about as big as the velocity of the platform. We never get any significant extra speed out of that on its own. The impulse is really only meant to cancel out the platform's velocity. So then how does the speed boost from Snuggle Slide actually happen? Well, let's just take a look at what the bridge does. It moves, obviously, but crucially, once it's fully extended, it stops moving may not seem like a big deal, but this is the other half of the equation that makes snorkel sliding possible. As I said before, when you touch a moving platform, it has to accelerate you in the direction it's moving. But what has to happen first is your absolute velocity needs to be converted to be relative to the platform. So pretty much right when that conversion happens, our velocity relative to the platform becomes whatever velocity we had before, plus the velocity of the platform, but pointed in the opposite direction. Now what happens when the platform stops while we're in this state? Turns out, the game just doesn't have any code to handle what should happen in this edge case. So instead of converting your velocity back to absolute and taking the bridge's velocity away again, it just applies the velocity you have in relation to the now stationary platform. So you effectively get to keep the backward speed from when you first touch the platform and carry it into your absolute speed. Okay, I hope that made sense to you, as it's not the easiest thing to try and explain and understand because of how unintuitive it is. But it gets weirder. This is what the task does, and this strat is so broken that the person who came up with it literally had to make a 6 minute video drawing arrows in MS Paint just to explain it to other runners. This is our funny player. This is moving 80, you land on the platform, jump off. this is no longer like part so of the So you equation. have these two actual forces, velocity, like the actual player run around, they cancel each other. Here's how I understand it. The differences between the regular snuggle slide and the inverse happen right away. Instead of sliding on the bridge until it stops, the TAS touches the bridge while it's moving and jumps off instantly. That way the conversion happens, so we get the backwards velocity of the bridge added to our own velocity. But again, since this velocity is measured relative to the bridge, which is moving backwards at the same speed, these velocities simply cancel each other out, meaning there's no absolute change in our velocity yet. Relative to the bridge, our speed goes up to 255, but our absolute speed is still at 120. So now, with 255 kilometers an hour measured from a platform that's moving backwards, we can turn 180 degrees to turn that into 255 kilometers an hour measured from a platform moving forward. The speed relative to the bridge doesn't change, but the absolute speed increases because we're now moving at 255 plus the velocity of the bridge. By turning around like this, we've effectively added the velocity of the platform to our own speed twice, one being the actual platform velocity and the other being the compensation boost that was supposed to cancel out. But we're not done yet. 
We now have our velocity plus two times the velocity of the bridge in absolute speed. But the game still measures everything relative to the bridge because we haven't touched any other object yet. So we can't turn around yet or otherwise the two velocities from the bridge would go right back to canceling each other out and we would lose our absolute speed again. So what we need to do instead is make our absolute velocity measured as the actual player velocity relative to the last touched platform. And we do that by simply touching a stationary part of the level so that the velocity is updated and everything is calculated relative to that stationary platform, which for our purposes is absolute. And this finally allows us to take the entirety of our velocity and turn it back around again. Funnily enough, this is the only bit of janky platform velocity tech that we've been able to carry over and actually use in Apex, though its practicality is pretty niche. All right. It works in the same way that you slide onto a platform and immediately jump off, which gives you both the platform velocity and the initial compensation boost, which cancel each other out. Then with a 180 tap strafe, you can turn that velocity around to point in the same direction as the platform velocity. The overall speed boost is dependent on the speed of the platform, so obviously these gondolas aren't going to fling you across the map at Mach 17, but I imagine the speed boost in combination with the 180 tap strafe can make for an interesting movement mix-up in certain situations. And that should be it. I realize there's a good chance that this video may have felt more like a lecture on vector math than anything, so for the five of you who made it this far, thanks for watching. And as a reward, uh, I don't know, here's a cat. <laughs>